flag. There we are. We are on the stream. Right, we are live. We are live we're here in the uh, Bayou Retreats Game House. What? We were captivated by the intro yeah, video. Yeah, watching the intro video, right? So if you're just if you're joining us, you're right on time. It's eight o'clock. We are starting right on time, which is amazing. Uh, we are here for the debut of the Sign Esports, the Founders Podcast. Hopefully, you're watching. Uh, if if you're listening, you won't be able to see this. But if you're watching, don't get offended if we don't look at you because we don't know where the cameras are really. And uh, this is really an audio podcast anyway, but it's a heavily video enhanced audio podcast. So if you're watching, you're going to enjoy it. It's going to be cool. So uh, we are the founders of Sign Esports. We'll introduce you to the fourth missing one here in a minute. But uh, he's over I'm, there in that chair. He's, right he's gonna, yeah. he, he sits right here in, in spirit. Uh, so it's about time to go to our first segment, uh, which is oh. features <laughs> some licensed, some unlicensed music. This is the only time. I promise I'll get something better next time. But. I'll write um, well, yeah, I'll write Justin's going to write us some sweet 16-bit music for this because this is this is uh, reliving the 90s. And I thought this would be a good one to start with because we just went in through introductions and we're going to talk about video games on this podcast mostly. That's how we're doing this. And so I wanted to start with a segment that was kind of about the video games that kind of made us who we are and the ones that like, when we close our eyes and imagine the good old days. Oh, this is the one where I was supposed to check why this music yeah. messed up. This keeps going. Yeah, but luckily it's still good chrono trigger music. Yeah. Oh, more good crunch. Mm, that's okay. Yeah, it's gonna stop in a second. So, How many do you have uh, loaded in there? Huh? How many do you have loaded in there? How many is it gonna uh, do? That's it. It's it's over. Okay. okay. So so here's what we're gonna do. Retro retro reliving the '90s. We might do different things different weeks. This week, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about uh, kind of a defining video game from our formative years. And I'm gonna say not like coming of age years, more like really formative years. Like when we were you know six, eight, ten years old, not in high school before that. So that's what I want to do. We're going to go, uh, I think, to Eric first, and then we'll do, hit Dustin. Let's do Dustin first. Do, okay, Dustin. All right, so Dustin, what would you, when you were when you were eight or ten year old, elementary school, junior high school, what would you say was a defining video game that when you close your eyes and think of being ten, that you think of playing? It either has to be Shining Force or Toe Jam and & Earl. And I, I'd be really hard-pressed to pick which one. Probably played more Toe Jam & Earl, but... The game that brought the three of us together, I distinctly remember being at Cat's Video. We y'all were spending the night that weekend back whenever I had my waterbed and my little like eight inch TV yep. mm-hmm. and the Sega uh, hooked up in the corner. And Eric walks over and he goes, "Let's get Mutant League football." Mutant League hockey was awesome. I'm like, okay, cool. And then Corey walks over and goes, "Let's get this game. It's got a skeleton on it." And me and Eric both laughed at him. We we're like, whatever. And my mom was nice enough to go, "All right, we'll get them both. Whatever." So me and Eric play Mutant League football. We have no idea what we're doing. Like, this game's stupid. So we turn it off, and then Corey sits down at and turns on Shining Force. And, like, we were hooked, I and mean, we were terrible at it. We stayed up all night and got to, like, Chapter 2, which is, like, spending eight hours to get 20 minutes into the game. But that, I always go back to Shining Force. Or like the other thing I did was whenever me and my cousin would hang out, we would always play Toe Jam Mineral. Those are definitely the two games that I have clocked the most time in my life on. There may or may not be a trivia question or two later on in the show about uh, that uh, that first night of playing Shining Force. May or may not be included in the trivia questions. And if, and okay. if we don't ask that trivia question, I'm going to bring up a couple things. So that that's great. Shining Force, definitely on there. It wouldn't be on the trivia list if it wasn't a defining video game for all of us. Eric, go. So I was thinking, we, we pre-had this question, right? So this was not, this is not. Yeah, it's in the rundown. We're not pretending, it's, it's this, very, is a, uh, we're not pretending this is a live question. Right, no, but, it's, it, they had some time to think about some of these. The trivia questions have not been pre-screened, but the, but the topic. So I've tried really hard to convince myself to say a niche game like Ogre Battle or Shining Force, or Final Fantasy Tactics, or a niche game like that. Especially Ogre Battle, because I still play it. Um, but it's none of those. It's Chrono Trigger. It, it could never not be Chrono Trigger. And that was actually when we were like 11. Yeah. Which you, cha- you you added that earlier time frame at the last second. But Chrono Trigger was when we were like 11. And... I we bought it, be, it. I wanted to be a core experience. It, dude, it is. No, it, no, that's, it what, that's what I said. It is. We were yeah. 11... 
Honestly, my, our mom bought it for us in Toro Hills. Toro Hills. We were at, we were we were in a hotel yeah. room. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I remember it vividly. And mom bought it for us. It was like $70, which yep. was like in today's dollars, that's like at least $200. Yeah. And we played so the like heck out of video game price. We, yeah. So it was like seventy dollars. Mom bought it for us. I remember when she drove up with Sent it. Sent her to the store it. to buy it, and she came back with the we, right we game. We played game. the heck out of it. We played the heck out of it. We we played every nook and cranny of it. We memorized everything about it. We just we All studied up on it. Mm-hmm. We 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 looked up everything you could look up before the internet was like totally easily all that stuff easily accessible. But we memorized everything. It so it's never going to be anything other than Chrono Trigger. Yeah. So that and that kind of transitions nicely into mine because I also thought Chrono Trigger. If you if you guys are listening or watching, you don't know this. Me and Eric are identical twins, and we met Dustin when we were <clears> seven <throat> years old, eight years old, third, third grade. grade, whatever that is. What's third grade? Eight years old. That's eight. So we're we're identical twins. Obviously, our formative years were very very similar. So we kind of just thought we we're wondering if we were going to say the exact same game. And so I also thought Chrono Trigger, but I ended up going back one step further to Final Fantasy three. It used to be back in OG days final fantasy 3 now it's called final fantasy 6 if you're a later consumer of it but the reason i picked final fantasy 3 slash final fantasy 6 is because of chrono trigger because i I, when chrono trigger came out we absolutely loved it we knew we were going to love it we wanted it immediately on launch day and we wouldn't have wanted that if it wouldn't have been for final fantasy 6 final fantasy 3 and and so thinking back, I was like, man, you know, that's what really made us into JRPG nerds, I think, is Final Fantasy III. So that when Chrono Trigger came along, we already knew that that was the game that we have to have. So I picked Final Fantasy VI, Final Fantasy III. It's, it's also a game that we have everything memorized about. You know, we've been, been, been through all the different nooks and crannies of it as well, beaten it a million times. That's my memory. That's our game. We'll talk more about it. Obviously, that's not the only games, but we'll save I'm some. I'm sure for that it. reasoning was, oh, we, if we just max out all these espers, we'll have all these spells, then we, we, we can not allow like, the planet. Something will come up, yeah. Not, not even realizing that, like, that was before power leveling was really a yeah, thing. Yeah, and, and we had no idea that we were less than halfway done with the game, or about, I'm, I'm, that's probably about halfway done with the game, you mm-hmm. know? So that's... So we got that's Shining our, Force... And Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI, we are definitely nerds. That is a core. That is a, that is a strong core of JRPG super nerd history. And look at us—we grew up perfectly normal. How yeah, about that? Arguably, arguably. Two so of us. We'll, two we'll, of us. Grew two up of us. Perfectly normal. <laughs> one, one is still still getting there. So, uh, so we'll, we'll we'll we got those three. Those are three great games. We'll add to them in the next couple of weeks. We'll talk about some more because these segments we may not do every one of these segments every week, but we'll uh, we'll come back and hit them. So, uh, moving on from that, we're gonna hit another segment uh, that is that is kind of talking about esports. And we while we're moving into this segment, we got to talk about the guy that gave us the idea for this segment, which is is the music coming? There it yes. is. Yeah. So we were at CypherCon uh, a couple of weeks ago, and there was a, we were doing a panel, and there was a gentleman that came up and asked us a question. He started talking about uh, Madden and, and uh, FIFA and sports games, and he said it would be a great idea to have a uh, George White. Was that his name, George? I feel like that we're, was it. If you're if you're if you're in the stream, and I mean or if I you're in the wrong. Discord and you recognize that story, uh, he came up and asked us a question, talked about esports, and had some really great insight into how cool it would be to have a sports center type broadcast about esports. And we kind of said that is a great idea. We're going to do it and we're going to we're going to make sure that you're involved and, and then we're gonna we call it esports center. And we're going to call it esports center and then we kind of forgot your name. Yep. So <laughs> if you're in the Discord, please take credit for that because we love you. It was an awesome idea and we're going to do it. So um, it's on the rundown as announcement. Do y'all okay. know what the announcement's going to be? Anybody know? Is it the Halo team? No, nope. no, it's the um, Smash Tournament at Lake Air Adventure. Oh. It is, it is the Smash Tournament Lake Air Adventure. So, what's the date? First of all, you know, June the sixth, so five to nine. So it's June the sixth. We'd love to have hundred players. We have enough equipment at Lake Air Adventures already, basically built to do hundred players easily. Uh, we have a giant LED wall. We have great sound in there. We have a multi camera set up, and we have just it's gonna it's gonna be fantastically awesome um, if for everybody that comes. And so everybody seems to come play in it. Dustin ran our cash prizes yeah. and loot prizes, sweet loot, loot, sweet loot, and cash prizes for serious players. Casual players also very welcome. Kids welcome. There's no specific age limit, but if you're under a certain age, you have to be attended by an adult. 
but everybody's welcome to come play. Have we settled on the uh, basically like door prizes, the the method for that yet? So the, we're gonna, we're definitely committed to a format that's going to include a, kind of a casual side, a, a consolation bracket or a casual bracket, so that, so that there's some type of reward for playing and having fun, even if you're not the best match player. We haven't quite decided how we're going to do that, but there's definitely going to be, you know, we came up with some ideas like, you know, the person that gets into the tournament the farthest that drives a Toyota or the person that gets into the tournament the farthest that is under 10 years old or that kind of thing. So we're going to make sure that everybody has fun and everybody's well rewarded. So um, say when it is again, June the, the 6th. The, the, the tournament is on June the 6th, uh, 5, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. At Lake Erie Adventures in Lake Charles, here in Lake Charles, and it's free, totally free. You just have to get into Lake Lake Erie Adventures, which costs money. You can either be a member. There's some day passes. There's some hourly things. So there's going to be some options on Lake Erie Adventures' website for specifically how to get into the tournament. Uh, but right now, you can find out about it by going to signesports.com, uh, and it's right there. There's a blog post about it right on the front page. So uh, that's that. We we love esports. We uh, are gonna continue producing events as long as you guys will keep playing in them. And we're hoping this is going to be a great way for us to produce a great event and have somebody that's great at reaching people reach the people and, and, and fill the, fill the, the slots with it. All right. So if you guys don't have anything else to add to that, we are going to uh, move right on to the next segment, which is, Oh, I have in here state of esports. So what I want to do now is, uh, and this is, I don't have a segment intro for this because it's still esports related. So, we, we, we had a, if you guys were at SciFacon, then you probably already got a little bit of this, but a lot of people were at SciFacon doing other things, not really paying attention to our panel. Totally fair. Totally fair. Which is, hey, you know what? That's reasonable. So I want to just recap kind of what we talked about at SciFacon about the current state of esports. So do you guys remember what we talked about and what y'all said? Anything, anything you want to add? Anything you want to at recap? Sofacon? At SciFacon, when we were talking about what's going on in the esports world and what's going on in. <clears throat> well, you touched on how esports is ostensibly died because of COVID and pushback from manufacturers, people staying at home and basically the lackluster attitude about coming out, leaving the home. And I think a lot of that is true. I think a bigger part of that in our particular scene is that we're just not reaching people because our, our friends are in this room right now. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, I think it's not as big of a problem about, people being willing to come out so much as get and reaching the people uh, that do want to come out and the right audience. Yeah, yeah. We talked about people still playing the games, but not playing them in a live sports environment. It's probably bigger than just us. That's definitely a problem that we have if people don't come play the games in a live sports environment, but that's probably bigger than us. But then there's part of it that is like, well, if you bring in big players and bring in big talent, that'll get more. Maybe, maybe you don't get, maybe the, you don't get as diverse of a player base, but you get spectators that want to be involved in it if right. it's a big game. That was one of the cool things about our StarCraft tournament that we did in 2011 or 2013. And then our big Halo tournament that we just did in, in 2022 was bringing in you know high tier broadcast talent and players talent got a lot of interest from the community to go and interact with those kind of celebrity people. So that was kind of a cool thing. The other side, you lose you, you lose a little bit of interest. Maybe if there's people that have anxiety about the competition level, but then if you have a, enough, you know, high quality talent, you can maybe get some more interest from the spectator side. So, um, I think it's it's really we're just kind of trying to figure it out, and I think everybody kind of is too. Like one of the reasons we're doing this podcast is to try to figure out like is this a way that the community wants to engage, and like do people want to just kind of watch us talk about what's important to us and what's important to the community and kind of be involved that way. Uh, and we're going to, so that's one of the ways we're going to try this. It's one of the reasons we're trying to esports event at Laker adventures is to see if maybe that will work. Maybe that will work. Maybe that will work. Maybe that will work. I we'll think talk. consolation prizes on that will help that a lot as well. Another thing is whenever you have more, so if you can split the difference, you know, you have the not great players, but there's a bunch of them versus not a lot of community interest. Well, the more players you have, those people all have families and stuff that are going to come watch, especially whenever you uh, dial into kids yeah. and such. And we saw that with high school esports. The middle school parents were absolutely the loudest. Yeah, They were like, I don't know what's going on, but he's having fun, and I'm happy to be here. That was the golden age of local esports, for sure. Is High school esports season two was definitely the golden age of live local esports. Hopefully we can get back to that. Yeah, and I think that that was a that was a kind of a, a perfect moment where we were able to combine our talents, which is creating a great production value 
a, a, a tournament that's very well produced and then a broadcast that's very well produced for people that don't play and maybe don't even understand the game, but they can they do understand an exciting atmosphere. And so that's one of the things that was just really great that we're kind of trying to find again is how can we create that kind of perfect um, perfect storm of interest from players and interest from the community and a quality broadcast and production that all kind of brings it all together. So that's what we love doing. Yeah. I feel like it's really hard to communicate the energy of a live event if you haven't experienced it either. Because you think, like, if, if you haven't been to a live event, you're like, I mean, I play video games on my it's couch. Just a video it's game. Sure, whatever. What's, what's the big deal? But whenever it's you go to those live events, like the very first uh, Overwatch League production, uh, which y'all decided to not go to. Yeah, we bailed on that. And so, like, I'm <laughs> yep. sitting there in the chair, and there's just the whole arena is full. You can feel people, like, the reverberations in the room from people pounding on their chairs and stuff. And just the energy was so high. And I'm generally not affected by that particularly a whole lot and even i was caught in it it was compulsory to stand up and shout yeah and that's we went to the wcs america in 2012 in starcraft 2's kind of heyday we're going to talk about now we're about to, we're going to talk about halo on this podcast so much we're going to talk about starcraft on this podcast so much so just get ready not not on this episode maybe but it's coming but what he's describing that the overwatch league uh, when it uh, when it started is very much like what we saw at the WCS America. Except is, WCS was much smaller than Overwatch League. Overwatch League was smaller. how many people in those stands? It was uh, it was a stadium, so it was about the size. How much does Burton hold? Yeah, seven eight thousand. It was thousands. Yeah, See, WCS, WCS was, was a few hundred. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't thousands. Yeah, smaller venues. Yeah, more like it would be at Lake Air Adventures. Yeah, and I think stadium esports is really what we just love, and we got we're, we're trying to find out right now if you're listening or watching this, do you love it too? Or is it just gone? You know, like if, if stadium esports is a thing, we want to find it and we want to create it. But that's kind of that kind of comes back full circle to one of our biggest challenges is just, is just communicate with people and finding out what they want, finding out where they are, finding out what they want, finding out what they want to do. You know, so that, that I think that I don't, that pretty much sums it up. We talked about Halo a lot at SciFiCon with with our friend Scooter, who's going to come on later and talk about Halo. We talked about there was that drunk guy that kept asking us the questions about. Um, Dynasty Warriors. Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and then luckily Scooter, uh, elo- elo- eloquently, uh, Ele- kind of, yeah, yeah swooped in and, and shooed him away. But um, that's that's kind of what we talked about at our panel at SciFiCon, which we thought it was cool to do. If y'all, if you guys want us to do it again, let us know. Um, that brings us to so look, j- just for for you guys can't read this, but you can see on my rundown, I have twenty seven minutes and thirty seconds is when intermission is supposed to start, and that is the at the end of at the end of about six minutes of discussion about the state of esports. So I think we're nailing it on the, on the progress on our way through this. Way to go. So we would love to you know, dig into these things a little more, but we're going to wait and let you guys tell us what you want us to dig into more before we just bore you for 30 minutes talking about one topic. On this week's show, we're going to hit them all and then see what you guys want. But uh, we're going to take a quick two-minute break, and we will be right back uh, after this quick break that does not include any sponsors because the only sponsor is Lake Charles Toyota. Get us live. Oh, Are we live? Yeah. Ooh. I didn't realize. I didn't realize I had that transition broke. It was supposed to. It was not supposed to loop. For those of you that are watching, if you're listening, we're gonna edit this out. You'll never even know. But if you're watching, that was supposed to not loop. It was supposed to play a transition and get us back to live. But what it did instead was that super harsh and awkward cut straight to back to us when we weren't ready. But that's okay. But shout out to we got a couple guys commenting in the stream. I mean, on the Twitch, uh, Arrow Cross just says woo. That's Arrow. Arrow. And then uh, J Lions. That sounds appropriate. J Lions mentions um, Call of Duty and Apex Legends. We'll, we'll catch up with Call of yeah, Duty we'll and Apex up Legends on that. later in the, in the broadcast. Yeah. So thanks for, thanks for putting some comments in there. We will respond if we happen to see them. One other thing that we missed that we have to do is we have to talk about, just very briefly, the fourth founder. Right. We can't leave Jeremy out here. We have, okay. you know, we have this. I forgot to put up the party screen. Oh, yeah. BBQ Bathrobe is one of the founders of Sign Esports. We consider ourselves the four founders. There's some, there's some, is there, hold on, I don't know this barbecue bathrobe story. You don't know the barbecue bathrobe story? No. Okay. Does that well, go with his sheeple pole? No, no it's, it's not related to the sheeple pole. It's actually related to a very obscure uh, video from the VMAs in like 2004 with Jimmy Fallon where he was playing Anakin Skywalker. Okay. And he, what he did is he took the scene from Revenge of the Sith where Obi-Wan Kenobi comes out of the ship and they kind of sh- there's like the f- initial face off with Padme before they start fighting but he replaces all of the uh Hayden Christensen p- portions <laughs> with 
Jimmy Fallon with himself, and he re rewrote all the dialogue to where when he was playing Anakin, he was saying all kinds of funny stuff. And it's one hilarious. Of the, it's really people funny. need to go look it up right now. How would they search for it? You, you have to just search for. Uh, I Apparently searched for Jimmy Lava Fallon, Planet. Jimmy Fallon. I searched Lava for Planet. Jimmy Fallon Anakin Lava Planet. Yeah, and and you can get it's a very old video. There's only like one copy of it. It's like 240p. But one of the jokes in there is he is is Obi Wan comes down out of the out of the sh- out of the ship and Anakin says why are you wearing my bathrobe because he's a Jedi robe or whatever uh-huh. and then uh, and then he eventually he ends up saying something about there's barbecue sauce on his bathrobe and uh, that ends up relating to only Sith deal in absolutes or something uh, I, don't, I don't remember but it's he does this he does this very very roundabout way of integrating. Something about the Obi Wan getting barbecue sauce on Anakin's bathrobe in order to make the dialogue and the rest of the scene work. It's very, it's very bizarre, but it's hilarious, and we all love it, and Jeremy loves it, and he decided to change his bathroom. name. So uh, what I was laughing about is the reason we all changed our names is because we all had very questionable. We did not uh, all. Well, y'all. Well, this was no, so hey, barbecue. No. So barbecue bathrobe. Is Jeremy's um, character name primarily in World of Warcraft? Yeah. And actually, go back, put the party screen back up. I think these are pretty much our character names. There we go. That we use a lot in a lot of games, but specifically in WoW, um, in World of Warcraft, these are the names that we use. And we all had names that were not for public consumption. I would say they were not for, con- yes. They, they were, were not they were really for any consumption. Not for anyone's <laughs> consumption at all. And we eventually... Not did- all of us, just you and Jeremy, really. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember what yours was, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I do remember. Yeah, I do. Okay, remember. Gotta, I just didn't use it as we much. we got to stop giggling. Yeah. we got to stop giggling. So all of our names were very questionable. Um, choices from when no one really knew who we were and eventually we all turned into grown-ups and we decided we have to change our names to something that is not vulgar we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> make it honest. we're gonna make a change to the rundown here we're gonna okay. put off we're gonna put off Spartans never die halo we're gonna talk about it later right now we're gonna talk about where all these names came from. <laughs> Okay. These. Right. So, not the other ones. <laughs> the other ones are gone forever. So, we're going to talk about the these. other ones, the vulgar ones that are gone forever. We're never talking about those. And again. they weren't that bad. Barbecue they just bathroom, were, we just did. They just were questionable. Pars and Horse bad. is a great story. Do Pars and Yeah, Horse. okay, I'll do Pars and Horse first. Pars and Horse is a way, way back in the era of Xbox Live Gold, right when it was not even called Xbox Live Gold, it was called Xbox Live on the original Xbox, uh, Halo 2 era. Uh, when you create an account, it gave you a randomly generated series of characters and words. And uh, at that time, when I created my first ever Xbox Live account in probably, I don't know, 2005, 2007 or something like that, uh, you know, something in that era, in that not neighborhood probably, the name that it gave me was Partisan Horse 37. And it sounded cool and, and it stuck, you know. Um, and I just think it, I think it's a cool name, so I've stuck with it forever. I've kind of bounced around a couple different things, but uh, I will always and forever be partisan horse, and I won't ever be that other thing again. <laughs> right? You remember it now? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Face Tank is um, Face Tank is a relatively new name that I use on, in stuff, but I've always I always pick in all the party games if. If the healer character is terrible and nobody wants to play the healer character, then I play. I kind of take one for the team, and play the healer character. But if that's not the case, like in WoW, he likes to play the healer. What I would love to do in all games, I always love to play the tank. And I'm not great at WoW, but because the only thing I do is tank, that's the only thing I ever do. I focus on one character all the time, and I do it really, really well. I'm a pretty good tank in WoW, um, and in WoW. What you don't want to do, you don't want to, you don't want to go in there and stand in front of the boss and just stand and everything and just let everything hit you in the face. That's called face tanking. But and so it's it's a self deprecating term. Um, that's how you Arisa too. That's how you Arisa too. You just tank it with your face. Tank tank it means take the hits, take the hits for your team. Y'all know that, but yeah. the, the, the viewers may not know that. Take the hits for your team. I should hope if they're watching and an esports podcast that they know that. If they're watching deep, as deep happen, as cut as this one. I happen to know there's a very good likelihood that our mom might be watching. Yeah. She's not going to know <laughs> yeah, what that yeah. is. Uh, so it means take it with your face. Take the hits with your face, which is not the way you want to take the hits. But that's where Face Tank came from. And I just love playing the tank and building the tankiest possible character. 
and like can't do any damage whatsoever. Like that's me. Like the less damage I do, the better. The more I like it, the less damage I do, and just take the hits. That's what I do. Don't you so. also have zero magic points in this? Yes, I did. So, on probably the party so, screen. Yeah. I think I gave you. Zero magic points. Yeah, yeah. a lot of hit points. Simplicity. The most hit points, 750 hit points. That's right. Magic. You're going there and you just take the hits with your face. Nothing complex. Corey, yeah. your stats kind of suck. Yeah. Well, I, that's a little self-deprecating thing also because since I'm the host, I made myself a level we one need host. To, so everybody knows I'm an absolute nub. What we need we're to do is we you need to be a level one host and each new, when we decide it's a new season, you need to you gain a level. level. There you and go. And everyone else, each appearance they have, they should gain a level for the appearance. That's what we need to do. We're making this up as we go. Uh, Mom says, <laughs> "Mom says thanks." I did not know what that meant. <laughs> Perfect. There you go. All right, Grizzle Toe. Where did Grizzle Toe come from? Actually, whenever I was at LSU, I was making an FTP server, and whenever you use Qt FTP and you type in all your numbers and everything, um, one of the things it asks is for your welcome splash screen to have a message, whatever, and. Just off the top of my head, I said, oh, I need something for this. Welcome to Gargamel Grizzletoe's Black Metal Bonanza, because as an English major, I like alliteration. And I said that, I typed it in, and then my cousin logged in to get something off my server and goes, Gargamel Grizzletoe? I was like, yeah, it's kind of funny. He's like, I like that. So then I went in the other room and turned Grizzletoe into a song, and then like it just sort of has lived on. It's like, all right. And it has stuck with you for quite some time. Yeah, and luckily since two thousand. And it was, and it was, and it was uh, non-offensive enough and kind of generic enough to make its way from obscurity into uh, incredible fame with you. Yeah, and right. you didn't have to jettison it when you became famous. And right. Grizzletoe is a famous name locally. It is a very famous yeah. in the like, esports scene. Yeah, people. Yeah, there are there are actually people that know you as Grizz and they have no idea what your name. That your so name is Dustin. funny that you should mention that. What I was fixing to say is like we actually kind of know you as Grizz and then also as Dustin. So yeah. like Grizzletoe is somebody that we talk to. Yes, and then <laughs> Dustin is someone else that we talk to at different times. Yep. All right, so that was I love that. That was a great aside. We're talk, talk about reliving the good old days and where the names came from. So we have a few minutes. Uh, we, so we we skipped over Spartans Never Die, which is where we just talk about Halo. Like I said, there's gonna be plenty of Halo to talk about in this podcast. We're gonna skip that. Do y'all want to spend a little bit of time talking about the game of the day, which is Helldivers, or do y'all want to wait until we get our flag up where it goes? Dustin bought us a Super Earth flag. Specifically for this spot, if you can't, if you're if you're not watching, if you're I listening, mean, it wasn't specific. You can't see where I'm spot. gesturing, but this is supposed to have a super earth flag. He bought it for us. We we got it, and we just never hung it. So do y'all want to wait and talk about Hell Divers later? I think we should talk about Hell Divers for like thirty seconds, and let Dustin tell us about what's going on in Hell Divers right now. And then we should also plug Hell Divers for the few watchers that we have. They should play it because it's super fun and awesome. Yeah. I agree. So, hell divers. So, we're, Dustin, Dustin's going to start us off and tell us a little bit about because me and Eric haven't played in like a couple of weeks. We're, we got kids and we haven't had a chance to play. So, Dustin, take 30 seconds. Catch us up on what's going on. What major orders have we recently won or lost? So, we recently we managed to pull out a, a 10 planet defend like in the 11th hour. Uh, it, I think the Australians uh, did it for us. And then there was another one after that. Where you got a, you had to choose between two planets to save. One got anti tank mines, and one got this airburst rocket that's basically an instant team kill. And your own team, your own yeah, team, yeah, your, own, your team. own team. And then they changed some spawning stuff. So solo spawn, solo games are there's going to be more patrols. But it's basically a. It used to be a one to six ratio. If you had four people. It was one to one. If you had one, it was one to six. Now it's just uh, keeps an even ratio on spawning. Nice. So running solo will be harder now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna parlay that a little bit into the, the solo solo versus four or whatever into what my one of my favorite things about Hell Helldivers is and why I think it's kind of latched on. And then y'all each hit real quick like favorite thing about Helldivers. And to me, it's the ability to uh join and rejoin a game you dropped out of and yeah. drop oh, drop into huge. a game in the middle yeah. of your buddy your buddy's done getting his kids in bed t- five or ten minutes sooner than you he goes and t- starts a 45 minute mission you join it tw- 10 minutes 15 minutes later that ability to drop in and out is just awesome it, it, you know i love that you can go ahead and get started that's very cool uh and then that so that kind of really makes it easy to just get into and play casually yeah. and you don't have to wait oh man they, they just started one i missed it 
works you know? super great for whenever your computer crashes every 15 mm-hmm. minutes. Yeah. If, you, if you're like if you're like old Grizz and your computer can't handle it, and uh, then you can hop right back in. Or if your internet goes down or whatever, because that's one of the most frustrating things, especially when when inter- when online only games come out, is if they have connectivity problems. The host goes down, you know, like the server goes down, kicks you out of the game. Halo was really bad about that originally. You, you'd spawn into the game. As soon as the game launched, you drop out and your whole team is stuck playing three. Not only can you not rejoin, they can't drop out. They're just going to lose three, three, you know, three versus four. So that's, that's one of the things I love about it. Eric, what do you love about it? I think it um, kind of captures the uh, <laughs> not PvP of WoW. So like you're not in there getting your brains beat in by other players that just want to beat your brains in. Um, so I like that you're playing against computer. I like to play against computer opponents, progressively more and more and more difficult computer opponents. So the ladder climb that you're doing is how good can you get so that it's like how good can you do against the common opponent? That's the way. Wow. That, yeah. That's what that's what. You know, the, um, what do you call it? The feedback loop or the, um, I can't remember what you call it in video games, what the, what the ter- term is in video games, but the, uh, the loop that your brain goes through is let me get better so I can kill more in hell divers, so I can kill more bugs. Let me get better so I can kill more bugs. And then the buddies are all also trying to get better and kill more bugs. Yeah. But you're not directly going in there and getting your brains beat up by another player. Um, so I like the casual nature of it. It keeps the competitiveness, um, just a notch down, it keeps the competitiveness just a notch down below threatening, yeah. where it's not threatening to go play it and have a good time. And games that make you laugh are automatically fun. Um, we have a lot that we, you know, you, you, you screw yourself up in WoW a lot and make yourself laugh. I mean, like that, that kind of thing happens. It has that kind of same feel. Making yourself laugh uh, and making your teammates laugh um, is definitely a fun part of it. In, in Helldivers, it just so happens to be that it's usually by killing them. Accidentally, yeah, and I think the no friendly fire turn off button. The developers have said we're never turning off friendly fire. It's part of the game. Friendly fire is part of this game. I think that's so awesome they're doing that because yeah. like accidentally blowing up your buddies is funny. There's nothing not funny about. Yeah, it, it is awesome. Dustin, favorite thing about Hell Divers before we move on to the mailbag. Tool tips. Friendly fire isn't. It's my favorite tool tip. Friendly fire. Friendly isn't. fire isn't. Yes. Yeah. And it's yeah. Short, sweet, fantastic. But no, um, running around and like. Helldivers isn't inherently fun. It is fun playing with your friends, and it's the same kind of shenanigans as Sea, sea of Thieves. Thieves. I was going to yep. say Sea of Thieves. Yep. The fun is trying to get out of this pickle that your buddy has put you in. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's that's. There's so much to unpack there. We're going to talk about Helldivers a lot too, and we're just gonna. We need to have a whole section about next time. We need to have a category on the rundown that's memes because man, Helldivers. Oh, the, the memes, memes are there. The fire. memes are fire. Okay, so we're gonna go hit. We're gonna go hit some questions. Uh, this segment is called the mailbag questions from our Discord. So what, it's it's very simple. Step one: join the Discord. Discord.gg slash ninety sports. Step two: ask a question. Uh, that, and so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through some questions that some people have already asked us. Let's see if I can go here and get He's the questions. I have them on my list here, all ready to go. Question number one. Haunted Otis Hertz asks, which we're not going to say people's real names, but we know who you are. We love you. You're awesome. What tech planning goes into an esports tournament? We got about two minutes. Okay, I'll take I'll take this one. Two minutes. Don't make it too long. Okay. The first tech the first tech planning it starts with obviously what game are you going to play, and then the next question after what game are you going to play is what does, does Corey it, want to do? Well, <laughs> okay. So in our in our planning, what was what does Corey want us to do is always like above everything else, <laughs> and you don't necessarily know how it's going to apply to your situation that you're currently in. But that's always above everything else. But so, what game are you going to play? And the next most important question is: Does it need internet? Because the most important thing for your esports tournament. Well, let me go back one. Are you going to play it live? Yeah. In in person. So I think we're assuming this is all based on in person. Does it need internet? And if it needs internet. The it, number one tech requirement is get good, reliable, hardline internet. And almost we learned that lesson at the League of Legends. Tournament. That's right. Yep. So the League of Legends turns we had to do it on um, Wi Fi hotspots. Hotspot, I mean, uh, cellular hotspots. That and was just fun. just for people's purposes, for tech purposes, bandwidth is almost always not the issue. Reliability and stability is what is always the issue. So it doesn't matter if you have a five gig connection. If it goes out every once in a while, that's doesn't do you any good. So that's the that's the that's the number one thing is do you need internet? And can you get good internet? Yep. Aside from that, the next tech thing is you have to be good at knowing or figuring out how many pieces of hardware do you need 
to play the amount of players you have in the amount of time that you have allotted. So that would be the next biggest tech thing is how are you going to acquire enough hardware to get your tournament played in not 87 hours? You know, yeah. we've, we've also for a few years struggled. And with we that. have struggled with that too. Yeah. And we, and we made it, we made some parents mad a few times by not being prepared. Well, like in, in high school esports, we had great turnouts. And one night we had 200 smash players and we were not technologically prepared. We didn't have, we, we had enough hardware but we weren't good enough at running that much hardware with the people that we yeah. had. And a tournament, a very common problem you can have with tournaments, tech related, is you, everything works fine, but you just don't have enough. And then your tournament takes way too long. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of similar question, but not so much about the tech, but about the personality. Arrow asks, when outsourcing for help and volunteers, what are some key details of people that you look for to bring in and help? And how do you go about sorting out roles to those individuals? So that's kind of like, what, what tech planning goes into it. This is like what people planning goes into. Mm -hmm. Generally, you just sort of meet people, feel them out, see what their interests are, because if they're interested in it, they're going to do a better job at it than like, hey, go coil that cable. Yeah. We don't like coiling cable. We, we don't do resumes. Like, we don't read resumes or like ask. We, we, we have to get to know you. Well, about uh, uh, two, two Sophicons ago, we started sort of looking at people and saying, is this person going to be good for this? Yeah. For the, for the 10 years prior to that. I mean, that is kind of how we got here. Okay. For the 10 years. Well, no, that's, <laughs> that year, that year yeah. we started looking. But the 10 years prior, no planning. Yeah. But a year or two ago, that's how we got Jack. Jack, right. we, we were looking for a... That's true. We, 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 for, we, we got it. Because me and Jeremy yeah. know the tech, but we needed somebody who was going to be there all the time. So that's how we got Jack. We yep. looked for people with that expertise. Mostly... What we have that we what we need that we don't have, and like Arrow was saying, how do you how do you find people to fit the right roles? What we need that we don't have is personalities to be on camera and yeah. cast. That's what we usually struggle the most to get. Arrow says, I, I consider myself a happy accident. A happy accident. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The uh, but people that are on people that are good on camera and cast, those are always hard roles to fill. And you can't really fill them without kind of just rolling the dice and saying, is this person good at it? That's uh, that's a great, like, we we have to get to know you. And once we get to know you, it might be the case we put you in one role, it wasn't the best for you. Or maybe you did okay, but we realized you're better at something else. Ren Spider is a perfect example of that. Ren Spider came on at our first Halo tournament just to switch cameras, just to uh, spectate the game. Mm -hmm. And they were like, this kid knows this stuff pretty good. And he was like, hey, can I go hop on and, and, and cast Call of Duty? It turns out he was a really good first-person shooter caster. Yeah, This awesome baritone voice and turns out to be a great caster. So if the most important part, I think, to... to, to and then Arrow is just good at everything. Well, there's Arrow. He's good at everything. Yeah. He, we, we, the crew that he came with, we kicked them all to the curb and said, that guy, though, yeah, right. we're bringing that guy back. Yeah. So yeah, Arrow, we love you. Uh, we got to move through these. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's Me asks, what's the process of starting a gaming center like the one at Laker Adventures? Okay, let's, you, let's you, take that real quick. Yeah, let's just so, knock that out. So a gaming center like the one at Lake Air Adventures is a huge undertaking. Um, if, you, if you want to do something like that, first of all, you need a tremendous amount of resources, and it's probably not realistic unless you live in a, great, in a, in a very large city. Um, so in Lake Charles, there's already a couple. There's one. There's, um, there's, it was there's a holiday. There's Lake, there's, um, Lake Air Adventures. Then there's that um, Game Zone and Sulphur, game zone and, and, sulfur, and yeah. there's Game to Life. that does kind of sort of semi -comp They don't do eSports specifically, but they do the same kind of like in-person venue stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but it starts with, you, you have to be good, good at running a very large business. And, uh, we'd be glad to talk to people about that. Um, but what you probably would be better off doing is getting involved at the game lounge at Lake Air Adventures yep. and helping them make that a success. Um, because it, it requires a tremendous amount of, of capital and time and business acumen. Um, that I'm not saying whoever this, whoever this asker is, I'm not saying they don't have it. I don't know them. They might have it. They might have all those things. Um, but that's a very, very long question. It's a yeah. very, very complicated thing to open a business like that. Dustin, I want you to take this one. It's kind of a convoluted question, but it, but it's uh, I think it's uh, we'll, we'll, we'll sum it up. But with the new golden age of fighting games currently underway, how the FGC is slowly growing, growing over time with the accessibility of modern fighting games and with Louisiana having strong tech and street fighter scene, will there be any sort of shift to bring in more fighting game representation or any shift to improve current fighting game tournaments in the foreseeable future? The reason I want Dustin to take that one is because he took on kind of playing the tournaments at the last Sifacon. And I think what that question really is saying is this is a smash town. It's always been anime and smash. And based on what we've seen, is there any, is it reasonable to expect that that there may be some other fighting games that are building up some steam. I think Tekken had a really good, strong turnout. It had an almost as strong turnout as Smash, which is an age-old scene, and we have players that come all the way from Lafayette. 
And so, you know, just with every other uh, tournament that we throw, if we have the players, we'll do whatever. Um, you know, there are venue considerations. Lake Area Adventures right now is letting us use that facility. And so if people want to become members of Lake Area Adventures to go to these tournaments or buy day passes, as long as we have signups, we can do those things. And so it's really just whatever the community speaks out to. Lai Ren, by the way, happens to be another happy accident. He is the one who cast Halo uh, fighting games for us uh, this year. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. And he cast a little bit last year just as a, hey, can I uh, can I go cast? And he did a great job, and we just didn't get in touch with him this year. Yeah. And we were happy to have him back. But, but Tekken, we'll do Tekken. I think I, and, uh, the ha Halleck's question, Overwatch question mark, it kind of well, goes in the same let, place. Okay, so, so Overwatch yeah. and um, Jay Lyon said, what about Apex and what about Call of Duty? I think um, first thing is, we want to get this tournament in at Lake Air Ventures out of the way. Not get it out of the way, but get it going, see how it goes, see how it's attended, and see if we have good success there. But our opposition to other games is non-existent. Right. We have no opposition right. at all to Call of Duty, Apex. The Battle Royales are probably are maybe a tiny bit below everything else just because it's logistically difficult to do the Battle Royales. Right, because you can't... It's, not all of them support a, uh, Fort, a hosted Fortnite server. Fortnite especially. Great, it requires a lot of either self-reporting or yeah. TOs to watch your screens yeah. and so, report your stats. So we may kind of stay away a little bit from the Battle Royales at first, but Overwatch, Apex, Call of Duty, we're totally in for those. And if we can have success at Lake Area Ventures... Where we don't have to rent a venue and set up, a, you know, a hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff just to have eight people show up and play. Um, if we can have some success there and establish a place we have tournaments at, then we will totally do Overwatch and we'll totally do Apex and Call of Duty. And whatever. Tekken and, 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 and Fighting Tekken are such a no-brainer. Tekken, they Tekken run so no fast, doubt, so right. smooth. Anything on so, consoles runs so and well. We will start doing a rotation of games that includes all these games, but it, it kind of requires having some success at Lake Air Ventures, having a location to play repeated games at. Yeah. But we're in for all those games. So the last question before we move on to trivia, we got a few minutes. We might, I'm, I don't know if we're going to be able to quit for five minutes of trivia. We might have to go 10 oh, yeah. minutes of trivia. But, that. The, uh, but Chronic asks, will Sign Esports ever have a partnership or an alliance or something along the lines, something along, the lot, along those lines with an online gaming community? So this is Chronic. We know who you are. You talk to us at SciFiCon. Uh, we, we're totally pro that. We want to, <laughs> we want to produce your tournaments. We want to be your production company. We want to produce the tournament. If you can put a group together, they don't have to be here. We would love for them to be in Lake Charles. They don't have to be. If you've got a group that wants to put on a tournament, let us help you with that. Uh, if, if you can find the players, we can absolutely put on the game. We, can, we, can, we would love to do that. What I was going to say is um, tell them, like, sign e um, info at signesports.com or where they email. Yeah, you can, e you can email us at uh, esports at lakecharlesfoot.com yeah. or the, or di or the yeah. discord, yeah. discord.gg slash sign esports. That's really the best place. But the answer to that question is, is a hard yes. We would love to get involved in helping you put on some online tournaments. If you can bring us a player base, we can put you on a tournament. And we do – we have – um, the level of resources it takes to help an online tournament, or even like those the Halo podcast guys that you started, you started yeah. to deal with. If you can, if you can give Corey a good idea, he'll give you some money, basically, because <laughs> it doesn't require a lot of resources to help little organizations get things going. If you just need a little bit of money, you just need a little bit of hardware, we can probably help with those kind of things. All that's required basically is you bring us a good idea. Yeah. If you bring us a good idea, we will support it. If it's, it's esports like the esports related. Shark Tank. We're Shark basically, Tank. We're, yes. that's, that's perfect. That is, we that basically, perfect we want to be eSports Shark Tank. Yeah. We want people to bring us good ideas. And then we have a little bit of resources that we can use to help funnel those good ideas into bigger ideas. Yeah. So I, he definitely, he's already in the Discord. We're going to continue that conversation. That would be a great thing. The, our, our, our biggest adventure into online tournaments was uh, we did, we did uh, in back way back, like almost over 10 years ago, we did an online qualifier for our StarCraft Two in-person tournament, which was really fun. We had like, like I don't know, probably a hundred players in the online qualifier. We had like 16 seeds that were brought in by the nature of their uh, like WCS points. And then like 16 seeds that played in an online qualifier. We had people from all over the world trying to play in and it was really fun. We had like eight computers set up in one room where we were hosting the tournament from spectating a bunch of games all at the same time. That was really fun. And then we did a uh, war zone bootcamp. Go remember war zone bootcamp. Yep. Um, that mm -hmm. was a lot of fun. Also, that was our really our only attempt to do a battle Royale um, but it was a lot of fun too. It was really difficult to get everybody, 150 players in the same game. That was a real challenge. Like Eric was saying earlier, there's there's some challenge to battle royales, but uh, we have we have uh, 
dipped our toes into online and we love it. We would love to be involved. So the way this is gonna work is we're gonna we're gonna go we have a we have a, a really, really good trivia plug in here for uh you stream face each other, you go yeah. head to head. Right. Yeah. So we're gonna go to this. We're gonna go. It's to actually trivia. me versus you versus the the Discord. So. The, yeah. The, yeah. So the way this works is it's well, gonna it's be Corey. Really it's gonna be yeah. Corey is administering the game, and it's gonna be Eric versus Dustin. I'm gonna keep score. Eric versus Dustin versus yeah. the Discord. Are you if, keeping if, score on? A, do you have a graphic for it, or are you just keeping? No, it I'm keeping it, keeping it on the tablet. I'm yeah. disappointed. It's I gonna be you were gonna e, have a digital one. I'm gonna put G for Grizz and D for Discord. And what's gonna what's yeah. gonna work is Eric and Grizz are gonna both write their answer on. Oh, oh, that's the 60-minute yeah, timer going okay. off. Let's yeah. keep going. They're going to both write their answer on their whiteboard and turn it around when I say, and if they get it correct, they get a point. And if they don't get it correct, they don't get a point. And if neither one of them get it correct, then we're going to go to the Discord and see who is the first person in the Discord to have the correct answer. And if they win, if they get the correct answer, they're going to take home some of that fabulous signy sports loot that we have set up on the table over there. Can we I have, show you or the camera? You, uh, you can show me because the camera's fine. I can go see it. So uh, what we have is about 10 categories, all of games that I, I happen to know Eric and Dustin both are relatively knowledgeable on, and I have curated trivia, 10 questions from 10 different games. So we are going to spin this wheel. If you're hearing this, you're going to hear a clickety-click Wheel of Fortune sound. I only feel good about like two of these categories. <laughs> but, but if you could see it, you're going to be, it's just, it's just really intense. Here we go. And the first category is going to be Chrono Trigger. Oh, sweet. All right, so let's go to the first Chrono Trigger question. What is Robo's serial number, which he goes by until given the name Robo by Luca and the party? Oh, dude. You don't have long because we can't let people okay. on the Discord be looking it up. Uh, All right, it's time to, it's time to answer. Eric, Eric's answer is R six six Y. Dustin does. I, I don't Dustin does not have, have an answer. The correct clue. answer is R six six Y. Eric gets credit for that one. Woo! All right. Sorry, right. Discord. Going that on the next question. That was kind of a hard one. All right. Well, we'll for, see. That, that's kind of hard. I've only played through Chrono Trigger. I know, once. right? Well, maybe okay. we're gonna get um, maybe we're gonna get something. Maybe it's Shining Force. Overwatch. Congratulations, oh, so, you got so Overwatch. Dustin, Dustin, Dustin knew better. I feel like I could okay. have you on this one. Okay. okay. Sweet little. What map features murals? Are y'all ready? Yep. Yeah, okay, what? Smiley Hearts face, and right. a smiley face. Okay. What map? This is from Overwatch 1. I assume it's from Overwatch 1. I don't know if they could have this map in Overwatch 2 or not. Which map features murals of Junkrat and Warthog on the map? Looks like it might be going to Discord well, for this I mean, one. I don't even know if this is even a map. <laughs> I mean, I don't think this is right. Oh, guys, guys, I, I just want to let y'all know we do have the correct answer already in the Discord. I don't even know if this is even a map. Eric oh, says okay. Junker Town. Dustin says Junker Town. The correct answer is Junker Town. I did not even know if that was so even a Eric map. Eric and Dustin Sweet. both get a point for that one. So does the Discord. Let's spin though. the wheel. The Discord gets a point. Oh yeah, you know what? I could actually give the Discord points for that one. I'm gonna I'm gonna give the Discord. Points. Oh, that was Chubb. Yeah, but Chubb, Chubb and Arrow, y'all only count as one. So the Discord gets one point. All right, let's go to the next Arrow's question. Arrow's right on both of them. Oh yeah. Oh, oh Arrow got R six six Y. While we're spending for the next question, I'll tell y'all, except for Ogre Battle and Overwatch, I knew the answers to all these questions. Like, I only picked questions that I knew the answers well, to. Well, Arrow, Dalton, Imperial, I would have eventually gotten you would have gotten that time. So. Okay. All right. I'm next category, Final Fantasy. Okay. And this is a mix. Of Final Fantasy is a whole lot of games. But I primarily tried to select ones from, like, the era of Final Fantasy okay. that we kind of grew up with. So it's mostly four, six, some, some tactics, and some seven. All right. So let's go to the next. Let's go to the Final Fantasy question, number one. In addition to the basic rules of the game and an advanced battle class, what course is offered in the schoolhouse in Narsh? Y'all don't remember this? What? In the schoolhouse, right? I didn't the own a Super Nintendo. <laughs> okay, one more time. Okay, outside of Narshi, in the very beginning, I remember right the, the front door was a schoolhouse off to the left, and they teach a class that's just it's just a class of school. Look. Okay, we're, read the question okay. one more time. New question. New okay, question. Right, don't tell me we're going to a difficulty level that maybe we can we can uh, aspire Field to complete. Field science is what everyone right? says. It's environment, huh? Field, Field science. science. Field science. That's pretty close. Environmental science is the answer to that. Uh, that environmental it, science. Era, oh, that one. Era, just, can it take was so sp- ridiculous that there's because it's like it's telling you about like how the active time battle system works and how like the map and the save points work and it's like over here is environmental science. I don't remember. Okay. That. All right. So look, we're gonna do a different Final Fantasy question. Clearly, Arrow can have my spot. Hopefully, y'all can get this one. What is the name of Tifa's bar in section in Sector Seven? I've never played Final Fantasy Seven. Oh my goodness! 
Somebody. See, I could get this one at that time. Um, I'm going to give Arrow credit for the for, for field science. Oh, that's pretty close. Oh, God. Um, Jump Chill is close. Yeah, Heaven something. Is it called Seventh Heaven? Yes, it's, like it's called Seventh, Seventh Heaven. Heaven. I'm yeah. going to give Eric credit for that. I guess. Okay. Well, you need to give the stream and I'll give Discord credit, credit also. Yeah. The fact that they're on the spot probably ratchets the difficulty up a little bit more than you were probably yeah. thinking. Next time, I'll play. Halo. Okay. 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 Well, if it's campaign related, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. All right. This this one, y'all might get this one. Okay. okay. This one's a little bit generic, kind of general knowledge. Which ODST turned Spartan 4? Did sci No, it's going to be I only know one. So I, I mean, did, I did sci fi veteran Nathan Fillion lend his voice and likeness to in multiple Halo games? I know that one. Okay, but you know who Nathan Fillion is, though, right? Yeah, I love Nathan Fillion. Okay. I, lo I love Firefly. Yeah. Yeah, so you're going to love Halo even more when you realize. Let's see if the Discord gets it, because Eric got it, so the Discord doesn't win. Has the Discord gotten any correct? That, uh, yeah, one of the... Discord has gotten everyone no, no, correct. I know, but yeah, we weren't even it? close on field science. Yeah, environmental yeah. science. That's the first one that Eric really got. Yeah, so, okay. So, Spartan Buck. Spartan Buck is the answer to that one. Yeah. And I, I'm sorry. I thought that was... An, I really thought that was a, uh, an easy one. I'm sorry. I mean, it probably would have been had I played halo okay all right maybe this would be a better maybe next time we'll have dustin administer the game and me and eric can have a trivia showdown shining okay. force. Okay. all right i'll probably know all something right. for this one all okay right. please be an easy question all right oh okay all right good this is a good question i think y'all both will know the answer to this one and the discord has no chance of getting this okay one yeah nobody plays shining force no one no one in discord is going to get this question during their first playthrough of okay. the game right. what ill-advised action did the founders of sign esports take early on in the adventure <laughs> do you remember this effectively one? ruining one character for that entire playthrough of do you remember the game? this one? yes i do <laughs> all right i see eric writing a lot Eric and Dustin both wrote. <laughs> Eric, Dustin wrote discard a weapon. Eric wrote more specifically dropping Hans's, Hans's arrows. Yeah. Yes, I wrote dropping Hans's bow. Yeah. I think we didn't, we didn't actually drop his arrow though. We gave it to Ken. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Gave it we to dropped Ken. yeah. Ken's weapon. Okay. We thought he sucked, and then we do just had a, these arrows. That do we, we have a shining force around. question that's not about our play. Like yeah, yeah. Go, I have go to one that's not uh, shining force specifically. Yeah. Okay. Without even spinning. Yeah, the because wheel? the Discord had no chance on that one. Let's let the wheel of fate decide. Okay, well, that's fine. Maybe it'll be Shiny Force. What if it was? I would be very surprised. The Wheel of Destiny. Oh, it's Chrono Trigger. Spin again. But you know what's right next to Chrono Trigger? <laughs> Shiny Force. Shiny Force. <laughs> okay, perfect. Let's go Shiny Force. Okay. What is... Oh, what... I can't write. What is the Phoenix... Oh, no, I can write. I just can't read. <laughs> Two different problems. <laughs> What is the Phoenix character Peter appropriately misnamed as in the North America and UK versions of the Shining Force 2 menu? Oh, his name name? What is his name oh, in the menu? Do you menu? remember that? Yes. No, I don't. You, you, you'll, you'll remember don't, when you hear it. You'll remember when you hear it. He's named something in the manual that didn't stick in the game, and it's much more appropriate than his name Peter. I, I'm just going to... Let's see if I have the Discord. This it, Discord watchers, do y'all did have y'all ever even heard of Shining Force? Let's see. All right, Dustin. I, I don't know. No fire. Fire. It's okay, ash. it's Ash. Ash. You ash that? is the name. No, I don't. Yep, in the manual, Peter is named Ash. Yeah. I don't know that the uh, the cat's okay, video have, have the manual in the rental. Two more minutes. Let's do. How do y'all know that? Cat's video did have the manual. It's a, a photocopy. They okay. copied all yeah. the manuals, black and white, and put That's that right. in there. Yeah. Yep. But not all of them had it. I remember no. Shining Force 1 did. Okay, Halo question. You ready for a Halo question? Right. Stream's yeah. going to destroy us on this one, probably. Yeah, probably so. Okay, which, this is easy. <laughs> which weapon is the key ingredient in the quick kill method commonly referred to as the noob combo? The Discord. Oh, guy wait, just that. one? It's just one and then any other weapon. Yeah, the right? other weapon is not as important. Yeah. All right, Eric wrote down plasma pistol. Dustin wrote down assault rifle. That's incorrect. So Eric gets the credit for that. The noob combo is you, said battle rifle. is you do the battle. Uh, plasma pistol battle rifle is kind of the most common. But really, all that matters is plasma pistol fully charged. One shot takes down their shields all the way, and then you can shoot them in the head with any other, pretty much any other weapon. And, oh, and I was thinking of quickly, in so. the new uh, Halo, one full clip of the AR takes their shields all the way down. Then you melee them. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they also noob, noob tube. They have noob tube that they call thing. 
they call grenade launcher noob tube sometimes. So you really? can probably also say grenade launcher. Yeah. All right. So I think Eric got that. Plasma one. pistol was correct. Yeah. Chub Chilla. Shout out to Chub Chilla for getting that one correct. Also, um, I'll give the Discord credit for that. So far, the Discord has only answered one correctly that y'all didn't get at all. That was uh, field science. Field science. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna do this. This is the final question. Unless it's a category that we've already gotten. We're going to do the final question on a category we've not yet gotten. Chrono Trigger's coming up. Diablo. Oh, Diablo. Diablo. Okay, Okay. all right. Diablo should be good. Yeah. I've played the first one. Yeah. Only. What three classes were playable in the original Diablo game? Okay. I'm not. Sh- I'm not a hundred percent sure that I'm gonna get this. We need to know the actual names of the yeah. characters. No, no. Well, no. It's not a proper name. It's no, 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 no. I mean, but it's not just like the fighter. No, no. You gotta right. know what the fighter's called, and yeah. Corey, do you know okay, the? I have my. The expanded classes from Hellfire. Uh, I definitely do not know that. So okay, all right. So the the correct answers. Let's see me all's answers. Eric guessed paladin, sorcerer, and Amazon. Uh, Dustin guessed warrior, rogue, and sorcerer, and that is the exactly correct answers. Warrior, rogue, and sorcerer. Way to go. Yeah, so rogue, Amazon, that's kind of, I think yeah. they're called Amazons. I, in right, ba- I didn't in know, yeah, I mean, I knew it generally. So Grizz gets the correct answer there. So it's warrior, it. and Diablo 1 is called mm-hmm. warrior? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Let's see if the Discord got that one yeah. correct, and then we'll call but it. But he had heal spells, though, didn't he? Barb, sorcerer, Everybody could pick rogue. up everything. Yeah. You didn't start with anything. You start with really low intelligence, really low mana. Okay, then you pick up the, right. the books off the ground that's to right. write them that's into your right. book. Yep. Yeah. That was kind of the cool thing about the first yeah. Diablo was that's everybody right. could do anything you wanted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Okay, so that's enough time. We don't want to keep these guys here forever, and we don't want to use up all our trivia questions, although I think I need to go back and add some easier ones for next week. Uh, we're going to come back in probably two weeks because it takes us a while to generate some content, and we all have day jobs. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, Dustin, Eric, do you guys have any final closing thoughts until we come back in two weeks? No, other than other than just tell us what you want us to talk about. I and mean, we'll talk yeah. about literally anything that will not get us kicked off our platforms if people want to hear us talk about it. We are, I don't want to sound like too like full of ourselves, but we are relatively knowledgeable about a lot of things. Yeah. And we like, or, or we have two weeks to get that way. Yeah, or yep. we have two weeks to get that way. So we, we will talk about pretty much anything people want us to talk about. Yep. Dustin, closing thoughts? I don't feel, I feel like Eric's statement is very, um, Overly has very, ambitious. has very underwhelming effect given that trivia round. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. <laughs> well, for you. Uh, I think, I think Dustin, I may have been a bit unfair to Dustin in the trivia. I don't think the trivia challenge accurately reflected Dustin's knowledge. So well, we made, having Cruncher get rolled four times is kind of unfair to me. Yeah, I didn't expect that right. to happen. So uh, my, my last closing thoughts to double down on what Eric said is, uh, you know, if, if you want whatever you want to talk about, tell us and we'll talk about it. That's what we're going to do. And also, you want to come on the show. We have this set right here. We have a fourth SM7B ready for you right here. So we're going to get Scooter on here to talk about Halo. Uh, one day we'll get uh, B- BBQ Bathrobe on here as a guest. We'll have all four founders on here one day. And we can probably uh, remote people we can in remote, eventually. We right? can remote people in f- from the Discord. I'm sure we can do that. Arrow, we can get you on. Uh, sounds like Chubb might want to come be on the uh, trivia challenge, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you want to come on the show, we would love to talk to you. We would love to reminisce about the good old days. Uh, I think I, I think we might be getting a visit from uh, Professor Shy Guy to talk about the chiptune scene, VGM scene, and also reminisce. Uh, maybe we can do a little music trivia, and Dustin will probably destroy us on that. Um uh maybe 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 not okay uh one last time thank you guys for listening thank you for watching special thanks to uh late charles toyota for making all this happen because all this gear it's all paid for by late charles toyota and every signed esports event that there ever has been and ever will be is paid for by late charles toyota so thank you all for buying cars for late charles toyota thank you all for playing and signing esports events thank you all for joining sign esports uh, discord.gg slash sign esports and uh thank you all for watching the founders podcast